Ever met a four-legged friend smarter than some humans? Well, in 1954, television introduced us to one such prodigious pooch. Enter a classic TV series that captured hearts with its tale of loyalty and adventure. This show, a staple of 1950s TV, wasn't just about a collie and his escapades. It delved into the bonds that tie families, both human and furry. Now, here's the kicker. There are more surprising, amusing, and tear-jerking facts about this series that you'd never guess. So, keep those eyes glued to the screen. Now, quick question for you. Is there a particular moment in this series that's etched in your memory? Maybe a scene that stirred something inside? We all have one. And here's the twist. This TV series isn't just entertainment. It's a life changer for some. Can you share a personal story of how it has left its paw prints on your life? Your experiences might just resonate with others. Speaking of experiences, what's your most cherished memory related to this series? Was it a family tradition to gather around the TV, or did it spark an unexpected adventure of your own? We'd love to hear your tales and reminisce together. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. So, with funny, shocking, and heartwarming stories in store, this classic TV series continues to captivate audiences. Don't miss out on the chance to connect over shared experiences. Stay tuned for more, and remember we're all ears for your stories. Share away and let the memories flow. Revisiting episodes from the 1954 television series, one is struck by the portrayal of a simpler life post-World War II. Some may initially dismiss the depicted scenes as exaggerated for television, but in reality, they reflect the genuine experiences of that era. Born in the mid-1950s, a viewer can reminisce about cherished childhood toys like a green garden hose, a cost-effective alternative to a day at the beach. Similarly, a clothesline served as a means to embark on imaginative journeys, transporting stuffed animals far from the house using wooden clothespins, a concept that might perplex a child in today's world. It's important to recognize that this portrayal of poor simplicity also mirrors the recent past of the country at that time. In the 1960s, looking back 30 years meant revisiting the 1930s, a period marked by the hardships of the Great Depression. The impact of those challenging times lingered into the early 1960s, serving as a backdrop to the unfolding narratives. Moving beyond the lens of nostalgia, the series transitioned from feature films to the small screen, captivating audiences across generations. The character's journey continued under various owners, including forest ranger Robert Bray when the family relocated to Australia. The final caretakers, rangers Jed Allen and Jack DeMave, witnessed unwavering commitment to aiding those in trouble, a hallmark of the show's wholesomeness. This enduring series holds a special place in the hearts of those who grew up in the 1950s and 60s. The simplicity of the narratives, the bond with the character, and the consistent theme of help in times of trouble left an indelible mark on viewers across different age groups. Meet Baby, the collie who took on the iconic role in the 1954 TV series. The grandson of the original Lassie Pal, he held the spotlight for six years until his unexpected demise at the age of eight. Remarkably, Baby remains the sole Lassie not to reach the age of 17, marking a poignant chapter in the series' history. Following the departure of Robert Bray after four seasons, the show faced a turning point. His struggle with alcoholism led to his exit, though an official statement attributed it to his weariness of the role. This decision marked the end of Bray's acting career, adding a somber note to the series' evolution. In a nod to its roots, pal, the inaugural Lassie and Lassie Come Home made a cameo in the TV series pilot. This appearance served as a farewell as he bid adieu in 1958. His legacy, however, endured through the lineage of Lassies that followed. The show's exploration of post-World War II life resonates with viewers, offering a glimpse into a simpler existence. Childhood memories come flooding back, green garden hoses doubling as cherished toys, and clotheslines becoming portals for imaginative adventures. The series masterfully reflects the genuine experiences of that era, providing a captivating narrative set against the backdrop of historical challenges. As the series transitioned from films to the small screen, it continued to captivate across generations. Under various owners, including Forest Ranger Robert Bray and later Jed Allen and Jack DeMave, the theme of unwavering commitment to aiding those in trouble remained constant. This commitment became a hallmark of the show's enduring wholesomeness. The timeless appeal of this classic TV series lies not only in its portrayal of simpler times, but also in the seamless transition between different caretakers for our four-legged protagonist. 
Each era brought its own unique flavor, contributing to the rich tapestry of adventures. In its early years, the 1954 TV series faced a pivotal moment when Tommy Reddick sought an exit after three seasons, eager to shed the role of a child at 15. Simultaneously, Jan Clayton's desire to return to musical theater prompted the introduction of Timmy, initiating a gradual transition. However, George Cleveland's sudden demise accelerated the shift to a new cast. An interesting tidbit about the show's iconic theme is that the famous whistle tune associated with the opening and closing credits didn't make its debut until season five. The initial four seasons featured a more traditional orchestral theme, a departure from the later recognizable whistle. Timmy, a key addition to the series, owed his name to producer Benita Granville's mother, Timmy. This simple fact adds a personal touch to the behind-the-scenes dynamics of casting decisions and character development. John Provost's departure from the series after seven seasons marked a significant shift. Tired of portraying the role of Timmy, Provost's exit led to the dismissal of the entire human cast. Speculation arose regarding Provost or new star Robert Bray demanding excessive pay, but the real reason was Provost's reluctance to continue portraying a naive child into his teenage years. In 2009, the U.S. Postal Service honored Lassie with a commemorative postage stamp featuring the canine star. This recognition was part of a series celebrating early USA television programs, including iconic shows like The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, and The Twilight Zone. Notably, Lassie stood out as one of the first long-running TV series to maintain its time slot and day of the week throughout its primetime run on AS television network. However, it transitioned to a syndicated program for the final three years of its broadcast. The enduring legacy of Lassie is not only about canine companionship, but also a testament to the show's consistency in scheduling. This commitment to a fixed time slot distinguished it from many contemporaries and contributed to its longevity. In its extensive run, the 1954 TV series managed to sidestep a common trope Timmy never found himself in the precarious predicament of falling down a well. A notable departure from the expected narrative twists, this series subverted the typical rescue scenario, keeping audiences on their toes. A pivotal moment in the show unfolded when comedy legend Andy Clyde made his final appearance as Ben Adams, following his recurring role as Cully Wilson. This one-shot return marked the conclusion of his contribution to the series, adding a poignant note to its evolution. Transitioning between lead actors brought about intriguing shifts in syndication. While John Provost held the spotlight, earlier episodes featuring Tommy Reddig were repackaged as Jeff's Collie. Similarly, Provost's departure led to the rebranding of the series as Timmy and Lassie. These syndication nuances offer a glimpse into the strategic decisions made to keep it fresh for diverse audiences. The behind-the-scenes dynamics took a turn when the iconic whistle tune associated with the opening and closing credits made its debut in Season 5. Interestingly, the initial four seasons featured a more conventional orchestral theme, emphasizing the show's evolution in both narrative and auditory elements. A name carries weight, even for a TV series. Timmy, a significant addition to the cast, owed his moniker to producer Benita Granville's mother, Timmy. This simple yet personal detail sheds light on the subtle influences that shaped casting decisions and character development. In a noteworthy departure, John Provost's exit after seven seasons prompted the dismissal of the entire human cast. The shift wasn't fueled by financial demands, but rather by his desire to avoid being typecast as a naive child into his teenage years. This decision marked a turning point and set the stage for a new chapter in the series' narrative. Recognizing its impact beyond the screen, the U.S. Postal Service honored the show with a commemorative postage stamp in 2009, placing it among the ranks of other iconic TV programs. Notably, it maintained its time slot and day of the week throughout its prime time run, a commitment that distinguished it from its contemporaries and contributed to its enduring legacy. In the grand tapestry of the 1954 TV series, each shift in cast and narrative brought a unique flavor, contributing to its enduring appeal. Through unexpected twists, strategic syndication, and behind-the-scenes anecdotes, the journey unfolds as a testament to adaptability and consistency in the ever-evolving landscape of television.